A three-dimensional reconstruction of your sample will require a Z-Stack scan. To obtain one, please start with activating this option here in, with clicking this checkbox and then find a Z-Stack tab in the menu. As you can see here, the Z-Stack can be performed in two different modes, in first last mode or in center mode. In the first last mode, the software will ask you to set the position where you would like to start your Z-Stack and then identify the focus position where you would like to stop it. And then it will also ask you uh, for the information about how many optical slices would you like to scan between the first, the first and the last positions. This distance is called range and here it's set to 50.75 micrometers and basically this will be the thickness of my Z-Stack. The letters on this diagram denote the first position, the last position, and the center position. And the blue square visualizes the focal plane on which I'm currently focused. The number of optical sections or slices is a very important parameter in your Z-Stack. On this diagram, the thickness of this cube denotes the thickness of one optical section, and currently it is set to 0.9 micrometers. The distance between the center of two optical sections will be called interval. According to Nyquist's theorem, to have a good three-dimensional reconstruction, you need to image each place of your sample at least twice. And you can achieve it by overlapping your optical section by 50%. There is a button in the software called smallest to smallest interval, and if you click on it, the software will automatically calculate how many optical slices you need to make to overlap them by 50% and cover the whole range you selected. The thickness of optical section depends on the size of the pinhole, and this parameter you can adjust in the tab called channels by dragging this scroll bar. Pinhole is a diaphragm which prevents out of focus light from reaching the detector. If I open pinhole completely, the optical section will be quite thick, 14.3 micrometers, but quite a big portion of this light will be coming out of focus and the image will be quite blurry. The more I close the pinhole, the less out of focus light can reach the detector, the sharper my image becomes. To set pinhole to optimal size, you should click on the button called one air unit right here. The software will calculate the optimal size of the diaphragm based on the wavelengths you are detecting, the numerical aperture of the lens you are using, and refractive index of the immersion you are using. As you can see in this case, one area unit button sets the size of the pinhole to 36.1 micrometers, and this will result in the optical section of 0.9 micrometer thickness. And again, this value depends on the wavelengths I'm detecting. So if I will pull the range of detection to longer wavelengths, you will see that one area unit will be now equivalent of 38.1 micrometer size of pinhole. And if I shrink it more, it will be a smaller number. It also depends on the numerical aperture, this number 1.3, and the immersion of the objective which I'm using. In case if you are detecting more than one fluorophore, for example, I would like to see also chlorophyll here, you will see that one every unit would be set closer to the optimum for the fluorophore with shorter wavelengths. And optical section for yellow and red fluorophore will be actually of slightly different thickness. And these differences come from differences in diffraction patterns of the red and yellow light. In some cases, you would want to scan quite a large range, but with a very few slices. For example, when your sample is very sensitive to laser light or your fluorophore photo bleaches very easily. And in this case, you don't want to have any gaps between your optical sections, because this will be just black stripes on your 3D reconstruction. To make them overlap, you need to make your optical sections thicker. And to do this, you need to op open pinhole. The software can automatically calculate for you what should be the size of the pinhole to produce optical slices, which will overlap by 50%. You just need to click on the button Match Pinhole. And as you can see, the size of the pinhole was automatically adjusted to let my slices overlap. The button Optimal is a duplicate of the button Smallest or to the smallest interval. So when I click on it, the software will uh, change the number of slices which is required for 50% overlap between the optical sections of this thickness. The button XYZ will 
increase the overlap percentage and it will produce cubical voxels. And also it will uh, result in a better quality 3D reconstruction. It quite dramatically increases the number of slices. High number of optical slices will increase the time required for Z-Stack scanning. Prolonged exposure to laser light might lead to photo bleaching of a fluorophore and also additional artifacts caused by phototoxicity. So one should be careful about it. One can increase the speed of scanning by decreasing the number of slices and also by tweaking parameters in the acquisition mode to decrease the scanning time for each individual optical slice. When all the parameters are set, you should click on Start Experiment and the software will automatically calculate approximate time required for scanning. In the 2D you will see overlay of all three channels I'm currently detecting and in the gallery you will see the progress of scanning of individual optical slices. You can also select and deselect channels which you would like to see. This information will not be erased from the file but will be just not shown to you. When the scanning is ready you can go to the tab called 3D reconstruction and ask the software to visualize the 3D reconstruction of your sample. The alternative mode of performing a Z-Stack is called Center and it offers you a different option of configuring your Z-Stack. You can see here a button called Range Select and when you click on it, the software will perform a very quick transverse scan of your sample. And then present you with this diagram. The green line here denotes the center of your future Z-Stack while the red lines denote the borders of the range of the Z-Stack. In case if you want to have a smaller or a larger range, you should pull them apart or pull them closer together. For example, I would like to have a small range Z-Stack with the center at this position. So I place the borders close to each other and I place the center uh, where I would like it to be and then click on center. And as you can see, now the range is centered around the position I, I selected. And again, the software advises you to go with a 50% overlap between optical sections. And here is the button to achieve it. And when you are done with setting the range and placing the center for your Z-Stack, you just click on Start Experiment and perform the scan. There are two other very useful options in the Z-Stack menu. And to see them, you need to click on the arrow called Correction. And as you can see here, there is a, an option of correction for refractive index. In this case, software offers you to correct for differences between refractive indices within your sample and the emergent you are using. It offers you to set the differences between two the refractive indexes right here. If your sample has a higher refractive index than emergent, then the difference will be bigger than one. And if the immersion has higher refractive index than your sample, then this difference should be smaller than one. Correcting for the differences of refractive indices will increase the resolution of your Z-Stack. Another very useful option is called correction for Z-brightness. It allows you to even out brightness of your Z-Stack. So for example, if your sample is very bright on the surface and quite dark in the middle, you can adjust parameters for scanning of different optical sections in the channels and save them in the list. So for example, if I scan in this place, I would like to have some uh, spots dimmer and then I can decrease the master gain. I can also tweak the laser intensity, digital offset and digital gain. And then I, when I click on the add button, the software will remember these settings for this Z position. After that, I can move to another position and adjust the settings again and remember them again and do so numerous times. Um, you can ask the software to interpolate these settings between these positions or extrapolate the saved settings 
to the optical slices laying above or below these positions. Enable test is a very useful function. It allows you to estimate what will be the brightness of your Z stack now after these settings will be applied. And if you are satisfied with the results, you go to the start experiment button.